Okay, this is going to be a brief video explaining the complement cascade. The diagram is by Jonathan, and the artwork is by Victoria. And we were inspired by Armando Hasunigan and his wonderful YouTube videos, and we thought that there needed to be a better complement cascade explanation. So as you can see here on the top, you have the classical pathway, the mannose-lectin binding pathway, and the alternative pathway. And the goal we're going to work towards so far in the beginning is going to be getting to C3B. So let's follow all these pathways down there. So the classical pathway, as you can see here, you have a bacteria that is presented and two antibodies have bound to this bacteria. It could either be an IgG or it could be an IgM. And the first part of the complement cascade has bound here, C1. So it binds to the IgG or it can bind to IgM. And C1, you can notice here, can pick up a Q, an R, and an S, and all together now they're able to take a C4 and cleave it into two pieces, making a C4A, which is the little piece, and a C4B, which is the small piece. So pretty much the whole point here was this CQRS can break C4 into C4A and C4B thanks to the antibodies binding to the bacteria. Another way that we could start would be this mannose-lectin binding uh, molecule here is bound to the lectin or the, uh, the mannose-lectin and it has two helpers. Instead of QRS, it has MSP1 and MSP2. And they serve the same function as this C1 QRS. The mannose lectin binding and the MSP1 and 2 break C4 into C4A and C4B. So you can see that both of these are pretty much initiating the same pathway. And they both get you to C4B. So once you have C4B, we're just going to forget about C4A for now. Once we get to C4B, whether we're coming this way or whether we're coming this way, C4B breaks C2 into two pieces. We get C2A and C2B. And C2B down here is what we're going to get rid of. Now, there's a little bit of a naming problem. Normally, the smaller piece was named A, but some people with big egos decided that they were going to name this B and not admit they made a mistake. So, this actually should be A, but we can't fix it. So, we're taking the C2A part and we're going to combine it with the C4B. So we see that we have the C4B here that broke the C2. We're going to keep the C2A. So we're going to get this thing called the C4B2A. And the same thing can happen here. C4B2A made of C2, the A part, and the C4B. So C4B2A. Now what is C4B2A good for? Well, it's good for breaking C3 into C3A and C3B. And as we stated earlier, C3B is one of our goals. So we're here at C3B, and we found how to get there from either of these. We go from C4, breaks into two pieces. We keep C4B, it breaks C2. We're going to keep the C2A and combine it with the C4B, and then that broke our C3 into C3A and C3B. Now, C3A actually has a function. It uh, functions with inf inflammation and cause leukocytes. So you can see leukocytes come help. It tells leukocytes to come over. So this was the classical pathway. And this was the lectin pathway or the mannose lectin binding pathway. The third pathway is the alternate pathway. And as you can see here in the alternate pathway, C3 will just randomly cleave into C3A and C3B. So this way we got there by all these steps. And with the alternate pathway, we just go straight to C3B. So now that we're at C3B, we can take a look over here at the alternate pathway a little more. So one of those C3Bs from the alternate pathway, because it just spontaneously breaks into pieces, this C3B can bind to a cell along with factor B and factor D. And what those do all together is factor D will cleave factor B into an A and a B. And we can see here, we're going to keep the big part of factor B, which is going to be called factor BB, and it's going to stay bound with C3B. And so we're going to get factor BB, 3B, or C3B here. 
And this was our other C3B that came from these two pathways, the classical and the MLB pathway. And this was a different C3B that came from the alternate pathway. So this C3B and this C3B are really the same thing. Now before we go down, we just want to remind you that the C3B itself is an opsonizer, which means it promotes phagocytosis. So if C3B is bound to a cell, like you can see here, a bacteria has a C3B bound to it, a macrophage is likely to come and eat it. And if that happens, then the whole complement cascade is over. And so if you're lucky, that will happen. But if you're not and your macrophages are all busy, the complement cascade can keep going. So what would happen if it keeps going? Well, the C3B here from the classic or MLB pathway can meet up with this factor B, B, C3B, that we made over here, and they can join. So we're gonna get a C3B, BB, C3B, which is where we get this name, C3B, BB, 3B. And this guy is responsible for cutting C5 into C5A and C5B. Now there are two factors that can modify how this works. Factor H, if that comes in, it helps glue this together and keeps it more stable. Whereas factor I, if it comes in, it will actually cut this apart and stop things. An alternate pathway to cut C5 is to take this C4B2A that we had earlier, and it joins with C3B, and that will cut C5. So we can either have this piece, C4B2A, join with the C3B, or we can have this piece that came over here join with C3B, and both of these pathways will allow us to cut a C5. So what happens when we cut a C5? We get a C5A, the little piece, and the C5B. The C5A, similar to the C3A up here, is a signal for inflammation and a signal for leukocytes. We have our flames and we have our leukocytes. But the more important part is not the C5A, it's the C5B, which initiates the MAC attack complex. So C5B will pick up C6, C7, and C8 to make a C5, 6, sorry, C5B678, which if you see here bound to this bacteria, C5B678 will start to pick up nines. And it can pick up from between 10 to 16 nines, these C9s. And what these C9s do is they make a pore in the bacteria that allows a bunch of water to come in and it will burst the bacteria. Now remember that this kind of pore is probably going to be formed on a gram-negative bacteria because it does not have that thick peptidoglycan wall. It has that thinner wall, so it's more able to have a pore put in it. And we have some lipopolysaccharides here. So we can see that's the whole complement cascade pathway. We have our classic MLB and alternate that all work together in different ways to get us to the C3B, which is an opsonizer. And if that's not good enough, then through various combinations, we cleave C5 and initiate the MAC attack complex, which goes C5B and then 678 and 999999, and that initiates the MAC attack and ends up killing the bacteria. So I hope you enjoyed that video. We might have more in the future. Thank you very much.